We won't delay by getting to the sports, and let's bring in the $330 million man, Mike Kazi. Good morning, Mike. I wish. $330 million in dineros. 30 cents. Man, amazing. I tell you, it's crazy. The world is crazy. Uh, it cost, uh, Now it costs uh, millions of dollars to hire a ball player a year, hundreds of thousands of dollars a pitch uh, in movies. Uh, and you see this more and more, Netflix and, uh, and uh, Amazon Prime making their own movies because it's much it's less expensive. But to make a major movie now, uh, you have to raise anywhere between 20 and $30 million just to make the movie. Um, I, everything's just crazy with prices, Mike. It really is amazing. I don't watch. I don't have Netflix. I don't have none of that stuff. I don't do none of that. No, but I'm just saying, you know, uh, sports leads the curve in insanity in in wages, but uh, it, it it's the same everywhere. It seems. Uh, well, you know, when you go to an auction and you can buy uh, a, a, a painting for six hundred thousand to three million dollars, I it's you know it's. But three hundred and thirty million dollars. They've got them for ten years now, so we'll see what happens. That's right. They stuck with them for ten years. We'll see what happens. I mean, anybody that bl- comes out and says that I didn't play as hard as they can, I don't want him on my team. I don't care what his name is. And Bryce Harper is one of those players. So he'll come out and he'll be flashy and he'll be running and doing this and doing that in April and May. Let's see what he does in August when the Phillies are an independent race. It's it's pretty amazing when when you when you look at this. Um, I don't. Know, I I I I'll just leave it. Nobody at that. is worth that much money. Well, here's the whole thing. Uh, he was he was the franchise name. Okay, he was their key player. Uh, they they they. Uh, and this is where sports has changed. It, it, it doesn't seem to mean mean anything to players anymore. Uh, to play for a, a team and just one, and just one team, and 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 suck it up. I, that, that's that's all. That's what I'm going to say. It's you know, it, it's just a crazy time, and the players are probably going to go on strike this year because they don't like the situation that developed this year. So I mean, what's the answer? What is the answer? Well, like I said, we'll see if they go on strike. If they go on strike, they're going to be in a lot of trouble. But uh, I I don't think they're going to go on strike because too many people are making too much money. And I don't think that strike will ever materialize. All right. Well, that would be nice. That would be nice. So, All right. Uh, Because then what are you going to do, watch football? (laughs) It would be a whole year with no sports. It's pretty amazing. We'll see what happens. Uh, We'll see what happens. Money, Money is king, and money talks, and people walk. Um, any sports you want to talk about before we get to racing? Um, no, that's pretty much it. Yesterday with that, um, you know, $330 million for 13 years. Um, I don't know. I think the Phillies could have spent their money a lot more, a lot more areas and become a better team than just getting Bryce Harper because what do the Phillies have besides Bryce Harper? And Bryce Harper can't pitch. Um, when they lose, he gets moody. That's not. There's, there's no. There's no amount of money that's going to change that. And you know, we'll let it play out. But I, I think it's a big thumbs down. So, but we'll see how it plays. Then, um, in other sports, um, the Knicks won the Derby last night for the worst team in, in, in basketball. They got beat by the Cavaliers at home, 125-118. And you know, it's funny when. I was watching some of the highlights. The coaches meet at the end of the game and shake hands. Yeah. They're laughing. <laughs> They're laughing. Now, me as an owner, when, when you stink as bad as both of these teams stink and you're laughing, there'd be a pink slip on your desk this morning. Yeah, no, I, <clears throat> it's, it's, I no agree. There's no pride in what you do anymore. Well, that's, what, that's what I was trying to say when I talked about some of the baseball players. There's very few of the baseball players that have pride in what they do, pride in the team they play for, uh, pride in the city they play for, uh, and pride in themselves. It's just amazing. <clears throat> it's just, you know, you don't was, need pride in the city. You don't need pride in any of that. You need pride in yourself. Yeah, but but you you, I don't, you have to have some sort of commitment to the team and the and the town and the people that pay your salary. Yeah, the, the all fans. you need is a commitment to yourself and the sport, and everything else follows suit. Yeah. Yeah, right. 
It's because if you play the hardest you can every time you play, it doesn't matter if it's New York, Kansas City, Houston. It doesn't matter where you are because the fans will respect you. It's not the town. Because every time a team wins a World Series, what's the one line they all went? World Series, Super Bowl, Stanley Cup, what's the one thing that they all say? This town has the greatest fans in the world. Yeah, okay. They're all, it's, it's, <laughs> they should just put that in the tape recorder and press the button whenever a team wins a championship. The fans, the fans are the greatest in the world when you win. When you lose, they're going to tarn feather you as quick as they can. So if you have pride in yourself and your output, everything else takes care of itself. All right, we have to go to weather fairly quickly, so let's get to... Yeah, no problem. There's a lot of races tomorrow, but we'll just go uh, quickly through it. Um, in the eighth race tomorrow is the Here Comes the Bride, a grade three, a mile and 16th on the turf down the Gulf Stream. Um, I'm going to take a horse coming off a layoff, the, uh, the four horse, my gal Betty. This horse is coming off a layoff since the Breeders' Cup, but before that, this horse was pretty darn good on the turf. And uh, I'm going to take the 6-1 to one tomorrow with this horse and, and hope for the best. Uh, another horse I'm going to use in here is going to have a late close and is getting blankets for the first time is the two-horse, Bell Laura, another 6-1 to one shot. So a pair of 6-1s to ones in the eighth race tomorrow at Gulfstream, the two, Bell Laura, and the four, my gal Betty. The eighth race is the Honey Fox, grade three, one mile on the turf. Um, this race sets up pretty nicely for what I think, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The ten horse, Dulce Lily, uh, trained by Billy Mott, coming off a race at, win at Gulfstream at the end of January on a yielding surface. Um, this horse has run very well on the turf, going all the way back to last April at Keeneland. So this horse runs hard every time. Um, two nice works at Payson Park, four to one. So uh, Dulce Lily is going to be my pick in the eleventh race. Uh, the 12th race, the Devona Dale, a one-turn mile for three-year-old fillies, a, a little prep for the, uh, for the Kentucky Oaks. The one-horse Jaywalk, two to five morning line, uh, won last four races by a combined close to 18 lengths, um, but you can't pay the bills on a two to five shot. Um, I'm going to go to the six-horse, Bold Script. This horse has never been on the, ter- on the dirt um, working very well at Payson Park, running very well last year north of the border on turf and poly track. Um, this horse is by Spitestown out of a Malibu moon mare, so the change to the dirt should not hurt. And if this horse acclimates to the dirt, I think it's going to give Jaywalk every bit of uh, a tussle. And in the meantime, you'll be getting twenty twenty five dollars for your two, and Jaywalk will get two eighty. So I'm going to take the price in the twelfth race uh, with bold script. And the big race of the day at Gulfstream is the 13th race, the Fountain of Youth, the Grade Two prep for the Breeder uh, for the Kentucky Derby, mile and 16th on the dirt. Um, draws a pretty big field in here. Um, there's a lot of horses in here. I think have no shot. Um, Hidden Scroll, who's the seven horse, is the nine to five morning line favorite for Billy Mott, coming off a 14 length win in a 13 horse field, maiden special weight, and that was on a sloppy track. Um, how much the sloppy track had to do with it, I don't know, but I'm not taking 9-5 to five in this race either. I'm going next door. I'm going to take Signalman, who's 9-2. to two. Uh, This horse ran in some nice races last fall, being the Breeders' Cup Futurity at Keeneland and the Breeders' Cup Juvenile at, at Churchill Downs, and then one on a sloppy track in the Kentucky Jockey Club at Churchill Downs. Hasn't been seen since. Training very well for Kenny McPeak over the Gulfstream Strip. Gets Brian Hernandez, who's a very unheralded rider down there, and I think is one of the best in the colony. I'm taking the nine to two, and I'm taking Signal Man in the thirteenth race, Fountain of Youth tomorrow. So, tons of races. There's there's a lot more stakes there that I didn't hit just because we don't have time. So, do yourself a favor, get the race in form, look at Gulfstream Park, and and try to pick a couple of winners tomorrow in those other stakes. Now, did you say here comes the bride? That's one of them. Well, here we. I wonder if they're going to do this at the start of the race. Um, no. No, think so. Um, no. You don't think that the, with that horn, they don't think they'll have the guy do that? Um, one hundred percent, no. <laughs> okay. It's a good thing I. It's a good thing I'm not at that track. I would do that. They'd probably kill me, right? Um, more than likely, they probably show you where the door is real quick. <laughs> real quick. <laughs> 
All right, Mike. Hey, I want you to have a good weekend. You too. Uh, you might get snow off and on all weekend long, and then get some uh, snow and uh, probably some heavy rain on uh, Sunday night into Monday. It's snowing here now. Yeah, we get light snow here now too. Uh, all right. Well, hey, have a great weekend, buddy. You too, guys. Take right. care. Uh, Mike Cosi uh, uh, with a check on sports this morning uh, here on The Breakfast Club on Robin Hood Radio. And uh, I'd be damned if I can get the call to drop once again. Amazing. Absolutely amazing my phone system here.